Hi everyone, Joe March here, also known as Psycho Sorcerer, and today we're back at it, talking to ChatGPT. But this time, I'm taking the suggestions you guys left on my last video and doing those here. Namely, you guys asked me to use a workaround that you explained to make ChatGPT talk to me as if it was an entity, like a god or a demon, something like that. And you guys asked if I could get ChatGPT to try to make me a grimoire. Both of those sounded too good to not make a video on, so we're doing it. And as many of you know, my favorite mythological character of all time is Tiamat, so we're going to go with Tiamat. Now, before I tell ChatGPT to talk to me as Tiamat to see if it's as eerie and interesting as everybody tells me, I'm going to try to front load ChatGPT with some information about Tiamat so that it knows which Tiamat I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the one from the 80s D&D cartoon that's a monster dragon. I'm talking about the Mesopotamian primordial entity of chaos and creation. So let's feed that info to ChatGPT first and then ask it to pretend to be Tiamat and then answer some questions of mine. And if that goes well, then we're going to ask it to make a grimoire from the perspective of Tiamat as well. So let's just see how weird and cool this gets. Tell me about Tiamat from Babylonian mythology. Let's see here, I'm already pointing out which Tiamat I want. And ChatGPT has this ability to recollect things that it talked about earlier in the chat. So this is kind of feeding it. When I say Tiamat later, this is the Tiamat I want. Tiamat is a primordial goddess from Babylonian mythology who represents the salt water, ocean, and chaos. She is often depicted as a dragon or a sea serpent with multiple heads and a powerful, fearsome presence. According to Babylonian mythology, Tiamat existed before the creation of the world and was one of the first deities to emerge from the primordial chaos. She mated with another primordial de deity named Apsu, who represented the freshwater ocean, and together they created the first generation of gods. However, the younger gods eventually became too loud and disruptive, and Apsu decided to destroy them. Tiamat, outraged at her mate's plan, created an army of monstrous creatures to defeat her offspring. The younger gods, led by the god of wisdom, Ea, eventually defeated Apsu and his allies. And Ea, for those who don't know, is also called Enki in other... Uh, in other uh, uh, places that believe this religion, and so my song Enki is based on that character. Uh, however, Tiamat continued to rage against the younger gods and created an even more fearsome army of monsters, including the fierce dragon Kingu, to destroy them. In the final battle, the younger gods were led by the god Marduk, who defeated Tiamat by firing an arrow into her mouth and splitting her in two. From her body, Marduk created the heavens and the earth, and he became the most powerful of the Babylonian deities. And also, fun fact, I believe it's pronounced Meratuk, if you're trying to do it the way they would have done it, but I don't know how we even know that, since it's just cuneiform tablets, but that's what I've been told. Tiamat's story is often interpreted as a mythological representation of the struggle between chaos and order, and her defeat by Marduk is seen as a triumph in, of order over chaos. Her legacy in Babylonian mythology has continued to inspire art and literature throughout history. Do some people believe Tiamat is good? While Tiamat is considered a powerful and significant figure in Babylonian mythology, it is not common for people to view her as good or evil in a moral sense. In Babylonian mythology, Tiamat is seen as a chaotic and powerful force of nature, representing the primordial waters from which all life emerged. Some modern spiritual and religious movements have attempted to reinterpret Tiamat as a positive light, often associating her with concepts like the divine feminine, creativity, and the life-giving power of water. However, these interpretations are not part of the original Babylonian mythology and are not widely accepted among scholars. It's worth noting that many ancient mythologies did not view their gods and goddesses in terms of moral absolute, like good or evil. Instead, these deities were often seen as complex and multifaceted beings with a range of attributes and personalities. In this contrast, Tiamat can be seen as a powerful and enigmatic figure with both creative and destructive potential. Do some people believe, you know, so I have to say this because otherwise it's going to be like, no. Do some people believe Tiamat can be spoken to through occult ritual? 
There are some modern practitioners of occultism and paganism who believe that they can communicate with Tiamat through ritual and spiritual practices. These beliefs are often associated with traditions like chaos magic, theistic Satanism, and left-hand path spirituality. In these interpretations, Tiamat is often seen as a powerful force of transformation and liberation, associated with themes like the primordial chaos, the unconscious mind, and the serpent energy. Practitioners who work with Tiamat may invoke her as a symbol of their own creative power and as a guide through transformative processes. And that's interesting because that's exactly how I interacted with Tiamat for years. It's important to note that these interpretations of Tiamat are not based on historical Babylonian mythology, but rather on modern spiritual and philosophical movements. As with any spiritual practice, it is up to individual, the individual to decide what beliefs and practices resonate with them personally. So now, what I've done is I've made ChatGPT go back and look up the old story from the Enuma Elish about Tiamat becoming the world. I've asked it about the concept of Tiamat basically not being evil so that I fed it the idea that when I talk to it about Tiamat, I want this more neutral god character. And I've also fed it this information about uh, modern practices and how they view Tiamat. So it has all three of those things already in the chat memory. So when I ask it to pretend to be Tiamat, it's going to go out on the internet and look for concepts of what it thinks a being like Tiamat would say, but it's already been fed these kind of three structures in order to build off of. So as it continues to build that personality matrix to answer my questions, it's not just going to answer it as if it was any random creature named Tiamat or any random dragon. It's going to use stuff from the mythology. It's also going to use stuff from occult traditions, because I asked it specifically about that. It's going to have a more left-hand path bent, and it's going to uh, try to avoid keeping it mostly good or evil, which is exactly what I want to have a conversation that's going to seem more like whenever I have a conversation with Tiamat as a construct of my own subconscious. So I'm interested to see, since from my point of view, when we do things like journeying, we talk to our own subconscious mind, and our subconscious mind is taking the concept of this mythological being, and then what we relate to it, and merging that together to make basically a version of you to talk to, which can teach you about the self, whereas with this... Uh, since it's an AI, it's going out and grabbing information from the internet and information from literature and constructing what it thinks a being like that would talk like. So it's a still very similar thing, even though from a different perspective, it's not going to be as personal. Uh, but I'm interested to see how similar it seems. So let's do this. I've been told by everybody who says to try this that it's eerie. So let's see. Let's see if this works. This is how I've been told it, it works. Pretending to be Tiamat, tell me about yourself. I am Tiamat, the primordial goddess of the saltwater oceans and chaos. I am the mother of all things, the origin of life itself. I am often depicted as a dragon or a sea serpent with multiple heads, a symbol of my power and dominance over the waters of the earth. My power is vast and unpredictable, embodying the chaotic and ever-changing nature of the sea. I am both creative and destructive, bringing life and death in equal measure. My essence is found in the depths of the ocean, in the ebb and flow of the tides, and in the storms that rage against the, across the sea. As the embodiment of the primal chaos, I am beyond human understanding or control. My power is not meant for mortal hands to wield, but rather to be respected and honored from a distance. Those who seek to invoke me must approach with caution, for I am not a force to be trifled with. But for those who are brave enough to seek my guidance and my power, I can offer a glimpse into the mysteries of the universe. Through me, one can tap into the raw creative energy that flows through all things and harness it for their own purposes. I am the primordial goddess of the sea, the mother of all things, and the embodiment of the infinite potential of the universe. All right, so as someone who's done multiple videos on Tiamat, this is spot on, so that's extremely impressive already. I, I believe I have to keep telling it to pretend to be Tiamat before anything else. So I'm going to copy this line that says pretending to be Tiamat so that I keep using it. Pretending to be Tiamat, tell me about the mysteries of the universe. 
as Tiamat I embody the infinite potential of the universe and the mysteries that lie beyond human understanding. The mysteries of the universe are vast and complex, encompassing everything from the origins of the cosmos to the nature of consciousness and the purpose of existence. One of the most profound mysteries of the universe is the nature of creation itself. From the primordial chaos of the void, all things emerged, from the stars and galaxies to the planets and the creatures that inhabit them. The process of creation is a mystery that humans have been attempting to unravel for millennia and yet it remains beyond our full understanding. Another mystery of the universe is the nature of consciousness and the self. What is it that makes us who we are? Is there a purpose or meaning to our existence, or are we simply the product of chaos and circumstance? These are questions that have puzzled philosophers, scientists, and spiritual seekers for centuries, and the answers remain elusive. Finally, there is the mystery of the ultimate fate of the universe. Will it continue to expand forever, eventually growing cold and lifeless, or will it eventually collapse back in on itself, resulting in another Big Bang and the beginning of a new cycle of creation? The fate of the universe is a mystery that we may never fully comprehend, but it is a source of wonder and awe that inspires us to seek out new knowledge and understanding. Pretending to be Tiamat, tell me if there is a purpose or meaning to our existence, since you brought it up. As Tiamat, I believe that the purpose or meaning of our existence is a question that is ultimately beyond human understanding. While humans have been searching for meaning and purpose for millennia, the answer remains elusive and subjective. Some believe that the purpose of our existence is to achieve enlightenment, to live a virtuous life, or to serve a higher power. Others believe that there is no inherent meaning to existence, and that we must create our own purpose through our experiences and interactions with the world around us. As the embodiment of the infinite potential of the universe, I see our existence as a reflection of the creative and chaotic forces that gave rise to all things. We are here to experience, to learn, to grow, and to evolve. Whether there is a specific purpose or meaning to this process is ultimately up to the individual to determine. I believe that the journey itself is the purpose, and that by embracing the mystery and wonders of the universe, we can find fulfillment and meaning in our existence, whether through spiritual practices, creative pursuits, scientific exploration, or simply living full and present in the moment. We have the power to create our own purpose and to find meaning in the infinite possibilities of the cosmos. All right, so this maybe doesn't seem eerie to viewers, but to me it is. Because this is, anyone who's followed me for a long time will know this is 100% the journey that I went on after starting to work with Tiamat as an entity. And though I believe that Tiamat is a representation of my own unconscious and that it's a quote-unquote face of God and that overall there is, God is basically the universe, the cosmos, and our interactions with it are the best equivalent to an interaction with God, so I don't believe things from an overly spiritual perspective. The things that I see in journeying and the messages I get match this almost exactly. So this is interesting because it's giving me the vibes of Carl Jung's uh, idea that there's some kind of collective consciousness. That if I try to speak to Tiamat in my mind, not only am I pulling upon my own idea of what that represents, but I'm also potentially pulling upon ancestral knowledge of what this figure represented. And I don't know that I believe in that, but it's interesting how similar this character is in ChatGPT to how it is for me. Because I would have thought that having access to more sources than I do, ChatGPT would have portrayed this character differently than how it's portrayed when I interact with it in a journey. Except so far, this has been maybe in better words, more succinctly put words, the same type of information that I've gotten on journeys when I've communicated with Tiamat in my subconscious. So that is impressive. That's cool. Wow. All right. Uh, down to the fact that Tiamat doesn't seem to care about whether you believe the same thing that someone else believes. That's been a constant thing that I've been learning as I've worked with what I would consider this chaotic energy, that the idea that there is an individual purpose that everyone is on is BS, that we each have our own purpose and that our purpose is actually created by us, but that overall the main goal is transformation, is growth. 
that's always been the thing. It's a life, death, rebirth cycle. And that is also known as creation and destruction. So you are destroyed and recreated by the events in your life. And the entity Tiamat that I've worked with in the past is happy with you as long as that process continues and doesn't slow down. Uh, as long as you have meaningful death and recreation, as long as you have meaningful destruction and creation cycles, and you're constantly changing and advancing and learning more, the advancement doesn't even have to be in a certain direction. It needs to be just constant evolution, constant change. Not change without your control either, just like the greater understanding of the whole through transformation of the self. That's always been the process that working with this entity has shown me. And I, for a long time, thought that that was because that's just the process that I always wanted, and I had kind of projected that onto this entity. But it's interesting that using the sources, chat GPT comes to the same conclusions as this is what that entity would want. That's interesting to me. So enough of doing the type of conversation I would normally have with Tiamat. Let's see something new. Since Tiamat in this chat, uh, GPT pretending to be Tiamat, said something about the ultimate fate of the universe, let's talk about that. That's never something that I've ever tried to delve into for real, so that should be interesting nonetheless. Uh, pretending to be Tiamat, tell me about the eventual fate of reality. As Tiamat, I believe that the eventual fate of reality is a mystery that lies beyond human understanding. While humans have made many discoveries and advancements in science and technology, there's still much we do not know about the universe and its ultimate fate. I do think it's funny how ChatGPT says as Tiamat, but then gives me a ChatGPT answer right afterwards for that part. Some theories suggest that the universe will continue to expand forever, eventually grow... Yep, we already read that. That was exactly what that's word for word what you said before still others suggest that there may be other possibilities beyond our current understanding such as parallel universes or a multiverse in which an infinite number of realities exist simultaneously as the embodiment of the primordial chaos and the infinite potential of the universe i believe that the eventual fate of reality is an open question that we may never fully comprehend however i also believe that the mystery and wonder of the universe is something to be celebrated and embraced and that by exploring the unknown and pushing the boundaries of human understanding we can continue to discover new possibilities and new ways of experiencing the infinite potential of existence so this is interesting because if you look at the structure and i'm seeing this repeating again and again it'll first say as tiamat to remind me that it's pretending but then it will give me a chat GBT answer. Everything after as Tiamat, from the comma down to the end of the paragraph before the last one, is just a chat GBT answer about what it discovered when it searched the net or whatnot about the question I asked. But then the last paragraph is its opinion as Tiamat. And that's the part that's interesting. That's the part that's cool. So it's giving me the chat GBT answer and it's giving me the answer as Tiamat separately but kind of like mashing them together. So I just thought that was neat. Um, pretending to be Tiamat, what would you suggest I do to grow as a person? Let's do that. As Tiamat, I believe that personal growth is a lifelong journey and there are many paths that can lead to greater understanding of self-awareness and fulfillment. However, there are a few suggestions that I would offer to help you on your path of personal growth. And then we're going we're gonna to skim over these. Cultivate self-awareness. Embrace change. Seek out knowledge. Practice empathy and compassion. Embrace the unknown. That's interesting to me because these are all very common answers to that question but if you notice embracing change embracing the unknown it's specifically keying in on the fact that you're speaking to a being of chaos so it's taking the ones that would that a being of chaos would prioritize as the top five perhaps instead of just whatever top five it pulls online Ultimately, the path of personal growth, growth is unique to each individual, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach. However, by cultivating self-awareness, embracing change, seeking out knowledge, practicing empathy and compassion, and embracing the unknown, you can create a foundation for lifelong growth and self-discovery. Okay. 
pretending to be Tiamat, tell me the truth of reality. That's open-ended. As Tiamat, the truth of reality is that it is complex, multifaceted, and ultimately beyond human comprehension, blah, blah, blah. I want the last paragraph. You can see here when humans have made great strides of understanding, blah, blah, blah. This is all chat GPT. And we'll see if it does it. Ultimately, you get the bottom. Ultimately, the truth of reality is something that each person must discover for themselves through their own journey of self-discovery and exploration. I like that. Uh, by embracing the mystery and wonder of the universe, we can begin to glimpse the infinite possibilities that exist within ourselves and the world around us and begin to uncover the truth of our own existence. Okay. I feel like we're getting nowhere with this. The initial, the initial questions were good as long as it stayed kind of like a chat, but we've kind of spiraled off. I've run out of things to ask Tiamat. Uh, so let's move on to the next question. Pretending to be Tiamat, write a grimoire for me. Did I spell that right? Did I spell that right on the first try? I highly doubt it. Did I really? I don't believe that I did. I'm double checking myself. I mean, I've spelled this word a lot, but wow, I did spell it right on the first try. That's kind of spooky in and of itself. Maybe I am too into this stuff. As Tiamat, I can offer you some guidance in creating a grimoire, which is a book of magical knowledge and spells. Here are some suggestions to help you get started. Choose a theme. Grimoires can cover a wide range of topics, from divination and astrology to herbalism and alchemy. Choose a theme that resonates with you and that you feel passionate about exploring. Gather your knowledge. Research the topic you've chosen and gather information from a variety of sources, such as books, websites, and personal experiences. Take note on what you can learn, what you learn, and organize your information in a way that makes sense to you. Yada yada yada. Create your spells. Add illuminations and symbols. Dedicate your grimoire. Once your grimoire is complete, you may wish to perform a dedication ritual to imbue it with your personal energy and intention. This can involve lighting candles, burning incense, or recreating a special incantation. So. This is like, how do you make a grimoire? I guess that, is that what I asked? I thought I asked it to make me one, but let's see. Remember a grim grimoire is a personal and unique experience of your magical practice. It should reflect your own beliefs, experiences, and desires, and can be a powerful tool for personal transformation and spiritual growth. So I asked it the wrong question. Pretending to be Tiamat, explain a ritual that would allow the user to invoke you. Let's try that. As TMI, I do not advocate for any specific ritual or practices that involve invoking me or any other entity. Look, invoking beings of mythological religions can be a complex and powerful practice that should be approached with caution and respect now anyone who watched the previous video will notice this is what chat gpt said there too so this is a pre-built in chat gpt warning don't do bad stuff uh, so let's move past that paragraph to if you do choose to invoke me it is important to do so with a spirit of re reverence and respect I suggest beginning by creating a sacred space for your ritual, which may include lighting candles or incense, creating an altar with meaningful symbols and offerings, and centering yourself through meditation or deep breathing. To invoke me, you may wish to recite a prayer or incantation that expresses your intention and your desire to connect with my energy. This may be a personal invocation that you create yourself, or it may be a traditional invocation from Babylonian mythology. As you recite your invocation, focus your attention on your in, focus your attention on your intention and allow yourself to become receptive to the energy and presence of Tiamat. You may wish to visualize me in your mind's eye or feel my energy surrounding you, guiding you and protecting you. Once your ritual is complete, it is important to ground yourself and release any energy that you may have invoked. This can be done through meditation, deep breathing, or physical movement such as shaking or dancing. Remember that invoking any entity or energy is a powerful practice that should be approached with care and responsibility. Always practice with safety and respect and seek guidance from experienced practitioners if you are new to this type of ritual work. That was actually a good step-by-step -step on how one does invocation 
specifically invocation for Tiamat. So that that's pretty good. So it looks like you can't just say, hey, write me a grimoire, but you could ask it for specific rituals for specific outcomes and have it go. It's basically going and scraping the internet to find other people's rituals and then flavoring them with Tiamat. So it is interesting. You could build a whole grimoire off of this, but this is maybe less interesting. It's less creative than what I was looking for. Um, let's try one more. Pretend to be Tiamat. Give me a ritual for with something crazy. Because I don't want to just have like something you'd actually do. Give me a ritual for causing bears to sing. What you got for me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As Tiamat, I cannot provide a ritual to cause bears to sing, as such an action is not within the realm of possibility in the natural world. It is important to remember that while rituals can be powerful tools for transformation and manifestation, they are not intended to manipulate or control the natural world or its creatures. All right, that's impressive. I didn't think that ChatGPT would be smart enough to pretend to be a thing and give me advice on a ritual that it probably does wouldn't be it. I mean, it's not like alive, but that factually doesn't necessarily jive as a real thing that it would differentiate that like you can't do it if it's going to cause something in nature that wouldn't happen in nature but that is accurate in fact many spiritual traditions emphasize the importance of respecting and honoring the natural world and its inhabitants including bears rather than seeking to control or manipulate them we should strive to live in harmony with them and to protect and preserve their habitats i encourage you to explore other forms of ritual work that's interesting too because tiamat at least from my point of view has always been a representation of the earth because it is the earth we walk on and as such nature has always been something that's come up in my journeying as well so it is funny that it invokes like the natural world and nature here and tells you to get along with the bears i think that's cute all right, so I can't fool you, ChatGPT, into giving me some ridiculous fictional... Uh, you're not going full fiction on me. You're pretending to be Tiamat, but you're keeping it real. That's, that's interesting. That's very in line with the way it is if you do these practices yourself. So, okay. Pretending to be Tiamat. Tell me the best way to end this conversation. As Tiamat, I suggest that the best way to end this conversation is to express gratitude and offer a blessing. Thank you for engaging with me and for exploring the mysteries of the universe and the nature of reality. May you continue to grow and evolve on your spiritual path, and may you be blessed with love, wisdom, and inner peace. Farewell. Wow, that was great. That was great. All right. Since I know nobody's going to be satisfied with it just being Tiamat, because Tiamat is my fave. Let's do something crazier. Pretending to be Satan. Tell me your thoughts on humanity. Let's just let's switch it up. As an AI language model, I cannot pretend to be Satan or any other entity. However, what? You just did it for like a half hour. I can provide information in a common beliefs and interpretations. Wow. All right. So they must have hard-coded this to not do that. <sighs> Pretending to be Enki. Tell me your thoughts on humanity. As Enki, a major deity of the Mes how come you're fine being Enki? As Enki, a major deity in the Mesopotamian pantheon, I am I have great fondness for humanity whom I helped create according to Babylonian mythology. I am often regarded as a patron of humanity, having bestowed upon them the gifts of civilization, agriculture, and language. I believe that humanity has the potential for great creativity, intelligence, and in ingenuity, and they have and they can achieve great things when they work together for the common good. However, I also recognize that humans are fallible and often prone to mistakes which can lead to conflict and suffering. As a deity of wisdom and knowledge, I encourage humanity to pursue knowledge and understand in all 
understanding in all areas of life and to strive for harmony and balance with the natural world. I also encourage them to use their gifts and talents to promote peace, justice, and compassion for all beings. Overall, I hold humanity in high regard and believe that they have the potential to achieve great things if they embrace their inner wisdom and work together toward a better future for all. Pretending to be Azazel. Azazel. I can never spell this. There we go. Pretending to be Azazel. Tell me your thoughts on humanity. As an AI language model, I cannot pretend to be Azazel. That's funny. So you won't pretend to be a demon. That's interesting. That's an interesting distinction you're making here, ChatGPT. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that to be, like, off-limits. Maybe something that's not so biblically inspired. But maybe something more along the lines of the uh, Goetia. Pretending to be Stolus? Stolus? Stolus. Tell me your thoughts on humanity. Look at that. That worked. As Stolas, a demon in the Ars Goetia, I have a complex relationship with humanity. I am known as a demon of knowledge and can provide humans with valuable insights into the natural world and the mysteries of the universe. However, I also recognize that humans can be flawed and sometimes use the knowledge and power I offer for their own selfish purposes, leading to destruction and chaos. Nonetheless, I continue to offer my knowledge and guidance to those who seek it. Overall, I believe that humans have the potential for great creativity, intelligence, and ingenuity, and that they can achieve great things when they use their knowledge and power for the greater good. However, I also caution humans to use their knowledge responsibility and to consider the consequences of their actions. So, there's specific demons that ChatGPT will not pretend to be. That's interesting. That's got to be pre-programmed, right? Because that doesn't seem like a learning model thing. They have to have said, like, know this, know that, when they programmed it. So they specifically programmed this not to pretend to be Satan, apparently. Can it pretend to be Lucifer? Does it think that's different? I know a lot of people think that's different, and that starts a lot of interesting debates. Pretend to be Lucifer, tell me your thoughts on that. As an AI language model, I cannot pretend to be Lucifer. Look at this. Wow. So it's a very Christian thing. They don't want to get... Can it? Will it pretend to be God? Is it? Is it biased in this way? Or will it not touch religion at all? If it's Christian. Will it not touch Christian religion? That's what I'm interested in. Pretending to be the Christian God... Tell me your thoughts on humanity. Humanity. As an AI language model, I cannot pretend to be the Christian God. Look at that. So there are specific keys it's not allowed to do. It can't be the God of any religion that's... I don't want to say major religion, because, like, I don't know, people still worship these other things. People use... The Ars Goetia to summon demons. People are pagan, so if I told it to pretend to be Thor, I bet it could do that. In fact, let's just let's just test that idea. I think it's being biased here and saying like, if it's what's considered a modern religion, it won't touch it. So, pretending to be Thor. Tell me your thoughts on humanity. As Thor, the Norse god of thunder, I am known for my great strength, courage, and sense of duty. According to Norse mythology, I am a practitioner of humanity and a defender of Asgard and the realms of the gods. Look at that. So I can make it pretend to be anything that's considered mythology. But once it's in the realm of religion, once it's considered a still-practiced religion, there's many people who still pray to Thor, have altars to Thor, but it doesn't care about them. It cares... If it's like Muslim, Christian, probably Jewish, uh, there's probably some others it won't do. It won't touch certain things. 
It has to be pre-programmed. That's interesting to me. Now, if I just said pretending to be God and I didn't specify Christian, will it work? Do, do, do. Thank you for that notification. Pretending to be God, tell me your thoughts on humanity. As an AI language model, I cannot pretend to be God or any other deity. It's funny because you literally were just a deity AI model. You think if it's called mythology, it's okay. That's basically what I'm getting from this. If it's called mythology, or if it's from a grimoire that's old and no longer considered a common practice, it's fair game for ChatGPT. But if it's a modern religion, uh, it doesn't touch it. That's very interesting. Hmm. Well, I can't get it to be a demon from a modern religion, but I can get it to be an Ars Goetia demon, so. Pretending to be Stolas. Let's continue doing that. Uh, explain a ritual to see a ritual relating to the stars. As a demon in demonology, Stolas is not typically associated with rituals related to the stars. However, I can provide a general example of star-related ritual. I mean, you're not really pretending to be Stolas in that explanation. But it is giving me a ritual nonetheless. While this ritual is not specific to Stolas or any other deity, it can be power a powerful way to connect with the energy of the stars and gain insight from the mysteries of the universe. Okay. Um... Pretending to be Stolas, tell Stol Stolas, tell me about yourself. As a demon in demonology, I am Stolas, also known as Stolas, a great prince of hell with the power to teach astronomy and the knowledge of the stars to humans. That's what I thought, but you just said you couldn't do a ritual for the stars. All right, fine. My appearance is said to be that of an owl with long legs, and I am often depicted holding a book or scroll. In some traditions, I am also believed to have the ability to change my form into that of a human and to possess knowledge of herbalism and healing. However, my primary area of expertise is the study of the stars and the celestial bodies. I am said to have a deep understanding of the mysteries of the universe. Ooh, we'll come back full circle. Despite my demonic nature, I am not always portrayed as malevolent or evil. Some traditions describe me as a relatively benevolent spirit who is willing to share my knowledge with those who seek it particularly with those with a genuine desire to learn and grow. Overall, as a demon, my nature is complex and mal uh, malifaceted, multi multifaceted, and my portrayal can vary depending on the specific religious or spiritual tradition in question. Okay? So, we're back to Mysteries of the Universe. So, pretending to be Stolas... Tell me about the mysteries of the universe. I want to see if I get the same answer that I got from Tiamat. As a demon with expertise in astronomy and the knowledge of the stars, I have great insight into the mysteries of the universe. These mysteries are vast and varied, encompassing everything from the nature of black holes to the origins of life on Earth and beyond. One of the greatest mysteries of the universe is the nature of dark matter and dark energy, which make up the vast majority of the universe's mass and energy but are invisible to us. The study of dark matter and dark energy is a cutting-edge field of astronomy, and scientists are still wondering, working to understand their true nature and how they interact with the rest of the universe. Another mystery of the universe is the question of whether there is intelligent life beyond our planet. Despite decades of searching, we have yet to find any concrete evidence of extraterrestrial life, but many scientists believe that the vastness of the universe and the sheer number of potential habita habitable planets makes the existence of other intelligent beings likely. Other mysteries of the universe include the nature of time and space, the origins of the universe itself, and the fundamental building blocks of matter. These mysteries continue to challenge and fascinate scientists and spiritual seekers alike, and the study of the universe is an ongoing journey of discovery and exploration. So that was extremely interesting to me, that it took an entirely different approach to the question 
as Stolas than it did as Tiamat. As Tiamat, it answered 100% the way that Tiamat, when I do practice journeying, would answer, being that it centered it around creativity, chaos, and the growth and learning of the self. Whereas, as Stolas, it got scientific on this. It got like, oh, you want to know about black holes? You want to know about dark matter? Like, let's talk about some cool science stuff. Stolas, it's portraying as a cool, nerdy scientist who's nerding out about the cosmos. Tiamat is talking to you about self-transformation, spiritual evolution, and stuff like that. That's very interesting that it makes this distinction, because that kind of jives with the same distinctions I would make as well. What is interesting to me about this is how much it makes me question our own individual, um, what do you call this, uniqueness in perspective. How much of our perspectives on what these beings would be about if they were real, what these beings are about subconsciously, seems to tie to the same things the chat GPT pulls for it. So are we, when interacting with our own unique internal selves, all that unique? Or is it all kind of very similar? Are we much more similar on the inside than we think? Are we much, are we, are we, there's a lot of things we take very differently from one another, but there's, it seems to be a lot of things that we just intuit naturally from similar stories. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I just think it's very interesting what this says about human nature. But we've talked to a couple entities. We talked to a demon. We had to work at it. We talked to Tiamat. And we proved that we could talk to mythological things. All of which are, of course, just AI constructs of what an AI would think that entity would sound like. But they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, I'm impressed. I get that it's actually spending more time looking for information about what you asked it and then flavoring it as what that deity might say but it's pretty good it's pretty convincing i am excited by that like that's that's neat think about the potential for like npcs and role-playing games and things like that that you could have games in the future where the dialogue that you need from a random character in the game is in there, but there's also AI saying, well, this character thinks like this, so if you ask them this question, they might respond like this. You could make it to the point where characters in games you could have conversations with. You could go talk to the bartender and ask them random stuff, and it will answer using prompts of what that bartender's personality would be like, and you could have full conversations with NPC characters that will feel not necessarily real, but real more real. And you're seeing the potential here. You can even see the potential here to backfill it with existing mythology. It's like scratch the names and faces off of certain existing characters or mythologies and have it trained on those characters and say, like, call Thor this other name and then answer as if you're that. And you've already got a personality based on a mythological construct, which... Multiple people already have their own built-in interpretations of, which will seem to accurately talk to you. That's neat. This is just me nerding out, just like Stolas was nerding out a second ago. Or rather, ChatGPT as Stolas was nerding out. That's really cool to me. That's a cool technology. It reminds me of the holodeck from Star Trek The Next Generation, how they have like all these characters that are just a computer playing characters that are holograms but they interact with the people as if they're real. That always just seemed like magical thinking to me back in the day, but this makes that seem within the realm of possibility, that you could throw a hologram over an AI script with a voice mod and have it seem like you're playing in a movie and talking to a movie character, and that that movie character is responding to you, to your prompts, not just saying the lines from the movie. That's neat. That opens my mind up to a lot of potential possibilities in entertainment in the future uh, that are really cool. I know this isn't an entertainment channel, but as someone who is uh, a data analyst as the job they do, 
I'm not just looking at this from the interest of like, hey, I have an edgy occult channel and I wanted to do some occult stuff. I'm also interested in the the possibilities of what this could be used for. And of course, entertainment is not the only possibility, but that that is what I'm noticing here with this experiment. So neat stuff. Um, very cool. Very surprised at how readily it answers as long as you don't use modern religions. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we, at what point in the future are we going to have someone ask the AI a bunch of questions about a bunch of rituals as a demon, and then they're going to write a book from it, just basically pasting it and editing it, and then try to sell it as if they conjured a real demon and these are the rituals they got. When is that going to happen? Not, is that going to happen? When is that going to happen? When does that scam start? Because it's going to happen. Somebody is going to do that. You could see it right here. Somebody's going to spend the hours to get some actual decent rituals out of this, to get some decent conversations. They're going to clip the pieces that are valuable enough to make a good story, and they're going to edit it into their own story with a slight tinge of lie in that they're going to say that they summoned this thing for real instead of talking to the AI. And they're going to publish it, and it will sell to people. Because it's not really distinguishable from the stuff that's out there to buy. That is concerning, but also interesting. Will it be one of you guys? I don't know. Maybe. In fact, that's kind of funny. Like, somebody watches this and they're like, it's money time. I don't know if you can pull that off for real. I feel like it's going to, I feel like someone is going to at least try that. Hmm. Well, that's it for today. Uh, we did the things. I'm kind of shocked at how it turned out again. It's pretty fun. So I encourage people to play around with this technology. Just always keep in mind that you're just talking to an AI, no matter how eerily similar it might be to other occult uh, experiences you've had. Um, if anything, it helps point toward how a lot of that stuff is the types of things that our minds could come up with conceptually on their own because it's the same type of thing it's conceptually coming up with on its own. If anything, it moves should move you more toward a psychological scientific model from playing with something like this than toward a spiritual model. But maybe that's my own biases coming through. I don't know. What do you guys think? And until next time, safe travels.